Amen. John chapter number 11 this morning. John chapter number 11. We're continuing the story of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. And if you remember the context, we begin in chapter number 11. And uh, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, they live in a town called Bethany. And Lazarus is very sick. Mary and Martha uh, send word to Jesus that Lazarus is very sick. And something in this passage of Scripture I actually use as a devotion a couple times this week. Uh, different places, uh, something that just kind of blows my mind about the Lord. They send word, the Bible says over and over that Jesus loves Lazarus and Mary and Martha, but they send word to Jesus that Lazarus is sick, about to die, and the Bible says that Jesus abode two days still where he was. And, uh, oh my, I think, well, Lord, come on, help and the bottom line is God is helping and waiting. And uh, Jesus tarries his coming. Lazarus dies. And finally, when we get to verse number 17, we'll begin our reading there. Jesus and the disciples are making their way to Mary and Martha in the place where Lazarus' body was. The Bible says in verse number 17, Then when Jesus came, he found that he, Lazarus, had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh to Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord... If thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. We come to this passage of Scripture, and today I want to emphasize the faith of Martha. Uh, the faith of Martha. Now, you remember the story of Mary and Martha. And... Uh, have you you've seen uh, some of these slogans? I, I think it may be even a book title, Having a Merry Heart in a Martha World. Do you remember, uh, you, you remember the story of Mary and Martha? Now, uh, Mary is the one that's always sitting at Jesus' feet. <laughs> and it's good. But in this passage of Scripture, uh, we tend to kind of pass over it. But in this passage of Scripture, I want you to see the faith of Martha. The Bible tells us Martha was the one cumbered about with much serving. But in this passage of Scripture... Martha shows that she has great faith in the Lord. There's a little phrase that just jumps off the page in my heart as I study this passage of Scripture, and I hope it will be a help to you. Jesus has come to Mary and Martha, and Martha leaves the place where the Jews and Mary are mourning the death of Lazarus, and Martha makes her way to the Lord, and when she gets to Jesus in verse 21... The Bible says, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Don't think that that's a faithless statement. She wasn't shaking her finger in the face of the Lord. She just made it clear. I know, Lord, if you had been here, I know if you had been here, then you have and possess the power to raise, to, to prevent him from dying. He says, I know that's within your power. If thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Verse number 22. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Do you hear the faith in Martha? She says, but. He says, I know if you were here while he's alive, you could have prevented his dying. But I know... Even now, I know even now, even though he's dead, he's been dead for four days, 
I know even now, even though our worst nightmare has transpired, I know that even now, even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Today's message title is this simply, Even Now. Even Now. It's easy to get in life into circumstances and moments where you think, you know, if God had showed up last week, then we'd have been all right. If God had somehow prevented this tragedy or this sin from occurring, if God had showed up last week, five days ago, if God had showed up then, then we would be okay. And the devil wants to discourage our hearts and think that somehow it's too late for God to rescue your family. It's too late for God to rescue your children. It's too late for God to rescue your marriage. It's too late for God. If God had prevented this, then we would be looking forward to a bright and happy future. If God had been received and accepted then, then we'd be okay now. But Martha, you can look into her heart. It's a heart that is submissive to the will of God, the person of Jesus Christ. It is a heart that is trusting in God. And she says, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. That's true. But I know that even now, I know that even now, even now, whatever you ask God to do, He'll do it. And I want you to know something. Even now, as we put our trust in the resurrected Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, even now, in spite of all the trouble that has transpired, even now, God is able and willing to rescue your situation. God is able and willing to work beyond your greatest imagination, even now. Let's just consider that today, even now. Lazarus dies, Mary and Martha are waiting on Jesus. Their hearts are broken, even now. Let's consider, number one, the tragedy of now. The tragedy of now. I want you to imagine all that's going on in Mary and Martha's world at this in the last few days. I mean, their hearts are broken. Their hearts are broken. Lazarus is sick. They call for Jesus. He doesn't come as quickly as they hoped he would. It's rough. Look what the Bible says. We'll just look at the scripture here and work our way through the tragedy of now. The Bible says in verse number 17, Then when Jesus came, when he finally came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. The tragedy now, the tragedy that Mary and Martha were suffering was that Lazarus had been dead for four days. Have you ever got into a situation where you thought, you know, if God does something right now, then I can see as to how this can be okay. But then it doesn't seem like he acts and two or three days transpire and you think, I don't know, maybe if God were to act today, then... I can see as how this could be, but then four days are past. You think it's too late. It's too late. The tragedy of now was Lazarus had been dead for four days. In their hearts, they had lost hope. In their hearts, they'd lost hope. Four days dead. Folks, please don't lose hope. Don't lose hope in the faithfulness of God. Don't lose hope. In the power and ability of God, the tragedy of now. Verse 18, the Bible says, Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. This is an interesting little point here, but it's about two miles from Bethany to Jerusalem. And when I think about that, I think just how close Jesus was. I think about how close it was to being okay. How many of you ever had a tragedy occur? And I mean, if it had just changed just a little bit, it was so close to being okay, but we just missed it by a little bit. Some people want to look at that and say we're unlucky, or some folks want to look at that and say, oh man, how unfortunate we are, but so close. 
It was close, but it's too late. The tragedy of now, four days dead, is close, but it's too late. Look what else is going on. Verse 19, many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now, this is kind of fascinating to me. I want you to pay attention to the phrase, the Jews. You see that in verse 19, the Jews? Now, here's the folks that have showed up to comfort Mary. Who showed up to comfort Mary and Martha? The Jews. What's that have to do with anything? The Jews showed up to comfort Mary and Martha. What kind of comfort did they have? I'm just going to tell you something, not much. Do you know what, the, pie, what the, uh, the style of comforting was for funeral services for the Jews? They would hire mourners. They had people who were professional wailers. Like they just cried loudly and uh, wailed. They still do that in, some, in Jewish cultures. You'll have mourners just wailing and weeping and crying. And the Jews had come to comfort Mary and Martha. You know what blows my mind about that? Because the Jews, the same group of people, the Jews, they had been causing all kinds of trouble. If you were to think back about the Jews over the course of the last few chapters of the book of John, and I want you to think about a few things they were doing. In John chapter number 9, the Jews were the very people who kicked the blind man that Jesus had healed out of the synagogue. The Jews are the same people that had picked up stones to stone Jesus. The Jews were the same people that were causing such grief. It was the Jews that the disciples earlier in chapter number 11 were afraid to take Jesus back to the presence, to the place where Lazarus was because the Jews of late had wanted to stone them. And the same people who were holding rocks at one moment were trying to comfort at the other moment. What I'm trying to say and what I see is I see utter inconsistency in the religious community here and the very people who are supposed to be trying to offer hope were rotten to the core. <laughs> The problem of now, the burden of now, the tragedy of now. If you were Mary and Martha sitting back watching, your heart's broken because Lazarus is dead. Didn't seem like Jesus showed up. The people that did show up were the most inconsistent nothings that's ever lived. There was no hope. For them, there was no hope in society and Jesus hadn't come yet. Tragedy of now. Uh, the picture I want you to see and the, what I want to paint is this. There are moments in life that are desperate. There are seasons of life that are tragic. But don't be deceived by the tragedy of now and forget that Jesus is a God of great victory in the lives of his people. Now. Now. At that moment, at this moment in Mary and Martha's life, at this moment in Lazarus' existence, at this moment in the story of Christianity, everything was rough. It was hard. But it wasn't hopeless. The tragedy of now. What the devil wants to do, he wants you to get so caught up with the here and now and the trouble of the moment that you cannot possibly have faith to believe that Jesus is able, even now, to do his great work. The tragedy of now. Number two, the faith of Martha. Let's look at the faith of Martha. What was it that would be the bright spot in this dark now? It would be the faith of Martha. The Bible says, in verse number 20, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Now, I don't really think that we should take and uh, hurt and crucify Mary here for not coming and meeting Jesus. But I do think that we can give praise to Martha for coming to Christ. You see, at a moment in verse number 20, at a moment when Jesus, by human standards, had been a disappointment, by the way, if you ever think that Jesus is a disappointment in your life, you're wrong. If you ever think that Jesus should have done this, but he didn't, uh, don't, don't allow the devil to put that kind of thought in your mind. But it happens. But it happens. We get angry and bitter towards God because of things that transpire in our lives. But we should not. 
Because when we submit ourselves to the perfect will of God, God puts the pieces together and works His will perfectly. And we should always be willing and ready to come to Christ for the, our needs. What does Martha do? As soon as she heard that Jesus was coming folded her arms and pouted and said, I don't like him anymore. No, she did the right thing. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. What did she do? That every opportunity she had, she went to Christ. The faith of Martha, she went and met him. The devil lies to us and wants us to think it's too late. Don't turn to Christ. The devil lies to us and wants us to think that God is some type of uncaring, unkind judge with his arms crossed, casting judgment without any care in the world. But when we have grief and burden and trouble, the place to run to is always Christ. It's always Jesus. Oh, you'll be glad you did. You see the faith of Martha. She went and met him even when her heart was broken. Look at the Bible says in verse 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. She said, I know something about you, Lord. If you had been here, you have the power to prevent him from dying. Do you believe that Jesus is able? I'll just tell you, the devil wants to rob us of our faith. It happens again here in this passage of Scripture. Actually, all through this passage of Scripture, there's an emphasis on believing. There's an emphasis on believing. And the bottom line is, the reason why Lazarus died four days ago is because Jesus is working things together because he wants his people to believe that he's able. And Martha does. I don't know if Mary has got to this place in her heart yet where she believes that Jesus is able to do whatever. But Martha believes, Martha believes, Martha believes. She believes that the Lord is able. She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Do you believe that the Lord is able? If we get to the place where we think that we have some problem that Jesus is not able to care for, we will always go down the wrong path for our solution. Now, you be honest with yourself. Do you have a problem? That you think Jesus cannot is solve or that Jesus is not the answer for? Do you have a problem like that? Oh, some of us say we want to compartmentalize our spiritual problem. Well, we've got these spiritual problems and Jesus can help me with that. But I've got this financial problem and I don't think Jesus can help me with that. Or we've got, you just whatever it is. We compartmentalize, and you think, if you think for one minute that you have a problem that Jesus cannot help you with, you're wrong. And when we turn our backs on Christ for our care, then we fail to take the medicine that is most important for our healing. Oh, I'm so thankful that Martha, in spite of the fact that her heart was broken because Lazarus had been dead for four days and Jesus didn't come when she thought he should. I'm so glad that Martha, in spite of the fact that Jesus had gotten so close but was too late, I'm thankful in spite of the fact that Martha could see, no doubt see, the hypocrisy of the Jews' religion, that she said, I'm not going to be deceived by all this. I believe that Jesus can meet my needs. We should always go to Christ for all of our burdens, for all of our cares, for all of our concerns, because Jesus is the answer. She went and met him. She believed that if he had been there, he had the power to heal her. But that was not the end. Then said Martha unto Jesus, verse 21, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Verse 22, but... I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Isn't that precious? Are you at a spot where you think, my lands, it feels like we're too late. It feels like the transgression has already occurred and the future is not bright anymore. If you get to that place, you are wrong. 
you're wrong. It's not too late. It's not too late to have a life that has a vital, wonderful loving relationship with Christ. It's not too late to rescue your marriage. It's not too late to rescue your future. It's not too late to change the course of your life. It's not too late. How can you say that, Lord? Because God has power and love and cares for you. How can you let us how can you teach us to believe that preacher? Cuz the Bible teaches plainly that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ask or think. And Martha, in spite of how bad the now was, she said, "I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee." What happened? She says, "It looks bad, but I know even now Oh, will you trust in the Lord? Oh, the devil loves for us to walk around defeated. But will you trust in the Lord? Will you trust in the Lord? Will you see what God can do with the tragedies that you've experienced? I'll just tell you something. The faith of Martha said, Even now, God, you're faithful. Number one, the tragedy of now. Number two, the faith of Martha. And number three, the power of the resurrection. I, I hear you, preacher, but is this just some type of a pipe dream? No, not at all. The power to meet your needs is found in the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in verse 23, Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. When he said that, Mary... I mean, sorry, Martha believed that, sure, I believe what the Old Testament teaches about a resurrection, that the dead will rise again. And by the Bible says, Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now, folks, that's not to discredit the fact that everybody lives forever, and if you're saved, you'll have everlasting life. It's wonderful. That's great news that we will meet again. And Martha was encouraged to know that she would see Lazarus again in the resurrection, but she wasn't believing yet that God was going to take care of the trouble in life at that moment. There's always this wonderful truth for the saved that we will rise again. It's good. The Bible says in verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. But Jesus' resurrection power gives us victory over death. I'm so glad. Verse 26, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? I, I like that phrase. We've been thinking about it a lot lately. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Uh, you know that our bodies will suffer death, but our souls and spirits never will. We'll never see death. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll never experience death. You'll experience new life. You close your eyes to die, and the next thing you know, you're alive and well in the presence of Christ Jesus. It's wonderful. But the Bible says, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. The resurrected Savior gives us hope for life and eternity. Life and eternity. You know, it's easy to get to a situation where we've got such confidence in heaven that we forget that God will give us victory on earth. Now, I always want to keep the focus on things eternal. Look, life is short, eternity is long. And we should live our lives in light of eternity. And when we live our lives with eternity's values in view, it changes the way we live our lives. It's good. We should always live life in light of the fact that it's short, eternity is long. But we should not live a defeated life simply waiting on eternity. I've met a lot of folks 
that have excused a defeated Christian life because they can't wait to get to heaven. That's foolish. It's wrong. It's faithless. And Martha, she had done nothing wrong by resting in the fact that, you know, I'll see him in eternity. I'll see him in the resurrection. But I'll just have you know something. Jesus did not come and live and die and rise from the dead so that you can live a defeated life and have a victorious eternity. The Lord has made it possible for you and I to have a victorious life and a victorious eternity. But it's all rooted in the same source of strength and hope, the resurrected Savior. You see, if you're not getting your victory through Christ Jesus, you're not going to have victory for life. And the Lord has promised, oh, He's promised to give us victory for living and victory for eternity. Oh, it's good. Take your Bibles and turn with me to a very famous place in the Bible, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, until we get to the last phrase of verse number 6 in Psalm 23, the Lord is our shepherd for what? Death, I think it's kind of interesting. I use this psalm often at funerals, and it's very appropriate. But the bottom line is, the 23rd psalm, the first six and a half verses of six verses, is all about living. When does God say he's going to shepherd you? He shepherds us through life. He shepherds us through life, and we're to live life victoriously. If you get to the place where you think, God's too late, God's too busy, God's too tired, God don't care, God just cares about eternity. You forget His shepherding work in your heart and your life, and you live defeated foolishly. Because I want you to know something, even now, even now, in the midst of suffering great loss, even now, even in the midst of great discontent, Encouragement and disappointment and troubles. Even now, God has promised to give you victory in life. And we spend our times with our heads hung low and our hearts broken faithlessly because we can't believe that God, even now, can make us happy with things we thought we couldn't live without. Does that make any sense at all? You've lost your mother or your father. Your aunt, your uncle, your child. And you think, I can't be happy without them. I guess I'll just have to mark time until I go to heaven. Thanks a lot, God. I've lost my job. I can't be happy. I've lost my confidence in someone. I can't be happy. I'll just mark my time until I get to heaven. I've lost my health. All I've got left to look forward to now is dying and going to heaven. The Bible, the Lord has promised as our shepherd in our deepest and most scariest moments to be our shepherd through life. He says, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in grave. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Who wrote that? David. Well, he could write that because he never had any problems whatsoever. 
You don't have to think long about David's life to understand he had lots of problems. Some of them self-inflicted, some of them others inflicted. But you know what he'd learned to do? He'd learned to rest in the shepherding care of God. And in spite of his discouragements, difficulties, disappointments, in spite of all the hiccups along life's road, he said, you know what? I believe that God is faithful. And I'm going to do the very best I can to trust God even now. Even now, even in spite of the troubles that I face. I'm going to trust God even now to prove His love to me. The Bible says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Oh, I'm so thankful that the shepherds promised to be with us all the days of our life. All the days. How many of them? All of them. And the Bible says, And then... And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now look, you may be here today and you're down on your luck. You're discouraged about the circumstances of life. You're overwhelmed by this, that, and everything. And I understand. I understand. But I just want to tell you on the authority of God's Word that even now, even now, even after the most terrible things have transpired, even now, God is faithful. And God wants to give you victory. And God wants to give you joy. And God wants to give you peace. And God wants to give you a new lease on life. And God wants to bless you and God wants to use you even now the big question that Martha was asked was this we know the answer she did believe she said do you believe that do you believe me he says I'm the resurrection and the life do you believe me do you believe me Martha do you believe me she said to him yea Lord I believe Thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. I guess the question that needs to be asked in the midst of your storm, do you believe that even now the resurrected Savior can meet your need? You should. He can. Do you believe? Even now.